Let's begin with the rotator cuffs. And to see the rotator cuffs properly, I'm going to remove the deltoid muscle. And we'll get to the deltoid a little bit later. But let's take a look first at this. This is the spine of the scapula. And above the spine of the scapula is a fossa called the subscapular fossa. The muscle that originates in the subscapular fossa is subscapularis. Subscapularis is involved in elevation and abduction of the arm. And as a result, it's going to insert on the greater tubercle of the humerus. Below the spine is the infraspinous fossa, and that contains the infraspinatus muscle. The infraspinatus muscle is a lateral rotator, and it's going to also participate in lateral rotation with this little muscle here called the teres minor, which rests above the teres major. Now both of these muscles are going to originate in the infraspinous fossa, although clearly the teres minor muscle is going to um, originate in the lower region of that. Both of these muscles are also going to insert on the greater tubercle. So greater tubercle, greater tubercle, greater tubercle. Below the uh, teres minor is the teres major. This one is a medial rotator and it is going to originate on the lower angle of the scapula, so the inferior angle of the scapula, and it will insert uh, near the intertubercular groove of the humerus. We spin this around, we see another muscle, and this one is also a medial rotator. This is the subscapularis muscle, it's going to originate in the subscapular fossa. And it's going to insert on a, a place all to its own, and that is the, the lesser tubercle. Let's take a look at some of the muscles of the forearm now. Here is the caracobrachialis, and it's going to originate on the coracoid process, as the name implies, and it's going to insert on the diaphysis of the humerus. Over here, we have the biceps brachii. There's two heads. The long head is going to originate on the supraglenoid tubercle or superior glenoid tubercle. And the short head will originate on the coracoid process. In other words, sharing a point of origin with the coracobrachialis. If we follow the biceps down, we see its tendon. And the tendon of the biceps here, this lower tendon, is going to insert on the radial tuberosity. Now, if we spin the model this way, we see the brachialis muscle. The brachialis muscle resides between the triceps brachii and the biceps brachii. Brachialis muscle begins down here at the upper region, so to speak, say the upper two-thirds of the uh, humerus, the diaphysis of the humerus, and it's going to come down and insert, depending on who you read, on either the coracoid process of the humerus of the, of the ulna, the coracoid process of the ulna, or on the ulnar tuberosity. The triceps, since we're already there, is going to have three heads associated with it. Two of the heads, the lateral head and the medial head, are going to um, originate on the diaphysis of the humerus, one upper, one lower. But then this is the long head here, and that's going to originate on the infraglenoid tubercle, uh, just below the glenoid fossa. And it will insert, actually along with all the other heads, all three other heads, will insert on the olecranon process. All right, well let's put our deltoid back and see if we can do something with this. The deltoid muscle is an interesting muscle because it kind of works against itself. This muscle is involved in abduction as well as elevation of the arm when it all works together. But notice that there are fibers on the, on the anterior side and fibers on the posterior side. The anterior fibers are medial rotators. The posterior fibers are lateral rotators. And so in other words, when we're medially rotating, these muscle fibers are, an, are agonists and these muscle fibers here are antagonists on exactly the same muscle. It's also a very good muscle to find landmarks because clearly it's a big one. 
uh, its point of origin is actually similar to the point of insertion for the trapezius muscle. So it's going to originate on the clavicle, on the scapular spine, as well as the acromion process. But then it, notice that it's going to point down here to a place on the humerus, which is referred to as the deltoid tuberosity. And look, if we follow this point, it points directly to the brachialis muscle. If we follow the brachialis muscle, this takes us all the way to the brachioradialis muscle. So follow it down. This is deltoid to brachialis to brachioradialis. And that's going to start our muscles of the forearm. So 